Hi everyone, my name is Smitha and I'm a Solutions Architect working for Amazon Web Services. And today I'm going to show you how you can get important business insights directly from your database using GenAI without even writing a single line of code or any query statements. So modern businesses use data. They use data for a lot of things. They use data to find out whether certain marketing campaigns were useful, whether certain products or services are profitable, or to even find out what are their greatest expenses. These key metrics often help businesses make informed decision about a lot of use cases, like revenue generation, um, limiting their losses, and things like that. But most of the times, the data is stored in databases, and querying a structured database like MySQL or Postgres can be hard for business users. There are tech teams which these businesses use, business users can reach out to, but again, this effort could take days or even weeks before business users could use and see the desired results. Imagine a scenario where you could simply ask a software something like, what was my total orders in last two weeks in natural language? And the software just replies you back with the results. With the powers of Gen AI models, this is doable. And AWS has created many sample demos for our customers to get started with their proof of concept very quickly. The idea is that you don't have to create everything from scratch and you can leverage these solutions and customize along the way. And one such solution is this, which help you solve the problem we just discussed. So without further ado, let's understand the solution. The solution covers these three databases, Amazon RDS for Postgres, Amazon Neptune, and Amazon Athena, which is used for querying S3 buckets. It also provides or sets up the respective database pre-populated with data as part of the stack deployment. I have also linked the schema of these databases, which, is, um, which are publicly available, so that you can have a look yourself. So Amazon RDS for Postgres, a SQL-based database pre-populated with um, DVD rental sample dataset. Amazon Neptune, which is a graph database and it's pre-populated with IMDB sample dataset. Amazon Athena, which is serverless structured data analytics pre-populated by supply chain oriented business decision benchmarking dataset. Both RDS and Athena uses um, use SQL query but Neptune's query language is either Gremlin or OpenCypher, and this solution uses OpenCypher. So let's understand the architecture. Um, this sample uses AWS App Runner for the hosting of the web app. AWS App Runner is a service that provides customers with a fast, simple, and secure way to deploy applications on an AWS without managing any infrastructure. Customers simply provide their source code or container image, and App Runner will automatically build and deploy the application, load balance network traffic, automatically scale up or down based on demand, monitor health of the application, and it in handles encryption as well. So the entire web app is running in App Runner, and App Runner is also acting as an orchestrator here. So the schemas of these databases is actually very, very important. And we are saving each database schema and its metadata in DynamoDB table, which is here. So basically, when we get a request in natural language, the application retrieves the database schema from DynamoDB. And then the app creates a prompt, which has the database schema and users question at the end. And it sends the prompt to Claude model from Anthropic available in Amazon Bedrock. And Claude model then provides the database query in return, which will be run against the database. I'll also show you how um, the prompt looks like in a minute as well. And these modern generative AI models like Claude they are very capable of reasoning and generating both natural language 
which is English, and computer programming language like SQL, GraphQL, Gremlin, Cypher, thus making our task easier. Cloud model creates a query and gives back. And the application then execute the query against the database in question and gets the result. Quite straightforward, right? But then there can be many enhancements you can do with this. An enhancement of this can be, um, you can actually pass the results that it is fetching from the database to GenAI model again to reply the user in natural language as well. Another enhancement can be um, you can add more databases like Redshift or a third-party data store like Snow Snowflake, mainly which can which actually use query language. And another um, evolution of this could be you know make this a chatbot which has a chat history. Now again, uh, we are saving the schema in the DynamoDB table, but then you can also use our service AWS Glue to dynamically scrape the schema and um, place it in a DynamoDB table. So in that case, you don't have to statically save the schema in DynamoDB. So here are some of the examples of how you can query the database. In this case, the RDS database, which is this, um, which is the DVD rental database. So you can ask things like, what are my top five best-selling movies in terms of revenue? You can also ask um, who are my top 10 VIP customers giving us highest revenue and things like that. So with that, let's start with the demo of the solution. Okay, so before starting the demo, um, here is the GitHub uh, samples repo. So uh, it's actually present under our AWS samples repository. And this is actually very well documented. If you want to scroll down and have a look, this is the architecture diagram that I just explained. And then this is one click deployment option as well. So if you want to deploy that indirectly in your account, you can just um, launch stack from here. And it uses um, AWS CDK to, um, to configure the entire infrastructure. There are some instructions about if you want to customize the stack as well. And these are some sample questions, um, basically the questions that you, just to give you an idea about how you can yeah, um, ask the questions to these databases. Um, just one note of caution that once you are done with experimenting and once you are done with your proof of concept, um, please feel free to do the cleanup to avoid um, you getting charged. Okay, right, so I have deployed that in my account. And um, um, and once you deploy that, um, this is how um, the AWS App Runner app would look like. So here, if you click on what can I ask, it also gives you the similar questions um, in, in all the three databases. Now, um, I want to show you something in the AWS console as well before running this. So um, if you go to your, um, your DynamoDB table, here you can see that um, all the three database schema are actually added in the DynamoDB table. So if you click on that, the first one, and I'll just go to the JSON view just to make it more uh, readable, you can see that the entire database schema of this IMDB um, graph database is added here. And so is for um, other databases like uh, PostgreSQL, and this is for Athena. So you can have a look as well. Now, uh, before starting the demo, I also want to show you um, that Amazon Bedrock by default logging is not enabled. So it, it's, it's a very good thing to start logging and to see how model invocations look like. What, are the, what is the prompt that is going to Amazon Bedrock to understand the flow? So um, if you want to enable logging, you have to go to Amazon Bedrock and um, click on the settings. Yeah, on the just click on this hamburger and then click on the settings here. And then here you have to enable uh, model invocation logging. 
So once you enable, um, you can actually choose what are the options that you want. You can have an S3 logging, a CloudWatch logs, and both uh, S3 CloudWatch logs. I've just enabled CloudWatch logs only, and I've given a log group name as Bedrock Logging. Um, and, and that's it. So once you enable logging, um, all the model invocations will go to this um, log group name. Cool. So let, let's start giving some requests, some questions to the to our model. So let's start with uh, with with Neptune. So um, let me copy this. So I'm going to ask um, how many movies has Robin Williams starred in by genre? And if I just click on explore data, um, it is giving me the query, the sci open cipher query that uh, it asks that it actually gen the, the model generates to be able to execute against the Neptune database. And it's also giving me the query explanation of how this model, the cloud model was able to generate this query. Uh, and this is because we are actually passing that in our prompt and I'll show you how the prompt looks like. But then if you look at the result, it is actually telling you all the records with drama, crime, comedy, and so on. Um, now, if I if you go to the, the model invocations, and this is the uh, log group name. So let me go to model invocations. And let me um, just pick up the last one. So here you can see that um, the prompt, how the prompt looks like. So it says that you are connected to a graph database with following schema. So as mentioned in the architecture, uh, when we were discussing the architecture, it adds the schema of the entire Neptune graph database. And then at the end, it is telling uh, the, the model that um, write a query to retrieve the data needed to answer the following question. So it's also um, giving you know, just giving some instructions to the model to answer to answer that that questions that question, and it's also telling that return the explanation uh, in the explanation in the explanation tag. The query would be enclosed in the query tag. Just makes it easier to extract this information, all this information. And at the end, you can see that the question is how many movies has Robin Williams starred in in uh, by genre. So um, that's the question at the end. And when you see the response, you can see that the explanation is in one tag. So um, it actually the model talks about how that query was generated. And then at the end, it is giving um, the query. So here is the, the query tag that's, that's starting, that's starting, and then it's giving you the query in between. So that's how the model invocation looks like. So let's explore some other databases as well. So um, if we do the, um, the, the Postgres RDS database, let me ask, you know, show me the name of the five customers who rented the most DVDs. And um, let me ask it and I'll change the database from IMDB to the DVD rentals and I'll just click on explore data. So um, here, Let's also go to the CloudWatch to see what is the uh, prompt that's being sent to the model. So here you can see um, that the prompt is, is being changed. So it's telling that you're connected to a relational database with the following schema. And now it's fetching the, the schema of the relational database. And at the end, again, it is appending the question that show me the name of the five customers who rented the most DVDs. And then again, it's asking the model to put the explanation and query in the, in the respective tags. So, um, if I go, how, if I just want to see what is the result, um, it tells me that it gives me explanation. It results, it actually created the uh, SQL query that did all the joins and things like that. And uh, it gave me all these um, the first name, last name of those five customers who rented the most DVDs. Now, um, let's try something else. So if, um, you can see that you can also ask the question in some other language. So let's let's try that. So I'm asking this and if I just 
but um, you know, see what is the translation of that. It, it's asking in German, which films were rented the most? So if I um, just execute the same query against the DVD rental database, I'll just click on explore data. So Claude is a multilingual model, uh, so it can handle many different um, language. So um, we have asked the question in German and uh, the Claude model was successful in creating that SQL query, including joins and everything. And it's also giving you a query explanation in, in German as well. So it's telling you how that particular SQL query was created. And then it's actually giving me um, all these all these the data. So we asked uh, which films were rented the most, and it's telling me that um, the Bucket Brotherhood was rented for 34 times, and, and it's also sorting it by the number of uh, rentals as well. So this will also work with um, with with some of the um, popular languages. It also it, it will also work with um, some of the non-popular languages as well, like local languages. But then uh, the query explanation might be you know uh, still generated in English. You just have to have a look how it works. But then again, Claude is a multilingual model and it's trained with um, with many uh, languages. So let's go back. Um, let's try the third database, which is Athena. And let ex let's explore what can I ask. So um, I'll, I'll ask, show me the top 10 suppliers from Jordan with higher sales. Um, then I click on explore data. Now again, the, for Athena, it's still ask, it's telling you that you're connected to Amazon Athena. And all this construction is happening um, in our app, app as well. Whichever database you want to query, it's actually fetching the database schema and creating the prompt uh, based out of that. And then the query is at the end. Um, now, if I look at the, the result, it is telling me, it's again creating that, um, that query. And it's giving the query explanation. It's also giving the the, the supplier names, right? So I hope you like the demo, and I hope you can take the advantage of the solution to actually talk to your database and get business insights directly. Thanks a lot.